Calling costs, it's energetically expensive, literally. So males that advertise by calling do it for a reason. It's a handy way to show off and over long distances to rival males and to any potential nearby lovely females that you're around and available. Generally for mammals, the deeper the voice, the bigger the guy. The bigger the guy, the more intimidating to rivals. With the ultimate goal, you get the picture. If you have a deeper sounding voice, you produce lower frequency sounds. It's because you have a bigger body and so have a larger vocal tract. But if you have a larger vocal tract, it would give you a deeper voice. Then you sound like you're bigger. Male howler monkeys do exactly that. They enlarge their hyoid bone, which forms a cavity, increasing the volume of their vocal tract. The bigger their hyoid, the deeper their calls, so that these males produce even lower pitch sounds than they should for their size. Basically, they cheat. Humans do it as well. A puberty boy's voices become deeper. One of the reasons for this is because the voice box, the larynx, gets bigger and descends to a lower position in the vocal tract. This creates a large cavity called the pharynx at the back of our mouth. Again, increasing the size of the vocal tract, which means they produce lower frequency sounds, deeper sounds than they should for their size. But wait a sec. Marine mammals produce higher pitch sounds than they should for their size. These really big guys have squeaky voices. In fact, for some marine mammals, like the leopard seals, the larger males produce higher pitch calls than the smaller seals, completely the opposite to land mammals. So if marine mammals aren't advertising how big they are, what are they advertising? Well, many marine mammals call for long periods underwater. But remember, as mammals, they're air breathing like us. So while vocalizing underwater, they're holding their breath. So in advertising their breath holding ability, they're presumably advertising how fit they are. Leopard seals are a classic. During the breeding season, the males sing through most of the day and the night for hours, every day, literally for months. They're tenacious buggers. So why invest all this time, literally months, into singing underwater? Well, females come into estrus, which is when they're ready to mate, at different times anywhere from November through to January. And the females don't go to a particular breeding ground where, fem where the males could find them. Instead, they drift with their pup on an ice floe in the Antarctic pack ice. And the females are ready to mate for only a short time after their pup is weaned. So for the males, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Well, technically, an estrus female in the pack ice. So males need to advertise, and widely. They need to be prepared if a ready-to-mate female drifts by. Their calls are loud, so loud that if you're nearby and a male seal is calling underwater, you can feel the ice vibrating. Because the sounds are loud, they travel underwater a long way. But presumably the females won't mate with just any male. And in fact, the males give away their identity when they call underwater. They sing a sequence of sounds for about two minutes, then go back up to the water's surface and rest for two minutes, then back down to sing again and again, over and over for hours. But that sequence they produce is similar each time. In fact, each male sings a distinct pattern. He has his own unique song. So males can tell one another apart, but females can tell them apart as well. So signaling for mammals on land and underwater are different. Land mammals favour low frequency sounds to advertise how big they are, and sometimes they cheat, whereas marine mammals care less about advertising their size. For them, how long you can do it seems more important.